Hello everyone, today we will be looking at gRPC. What is it? Why would you want to use it? And most importantly, how to use it? Now, if you have already done your research on the topic and don't want to hear all of the theoretical part all over again, you can skip it by jumping to the time code you see on the screen where we will write some actual code. Okay, so with that being said, let's take a look at the history. So, gRPC was created by Google in 2015. It's an open source framework for working with remote procedure calls. G in the name is deliberately ambiguous and can mean literally whatever you like. But what are those mysterious remote procedure calls? Well, RPC is a communication protocol for distributed systems. The idea is to allow one computer to trigger the execution of a procedure in another while having the code written in such a way that from the perspective of the calling program, it looks as if the code is being executed locally. gRPC aims to simplify and optimize this process. One of its main strengths is the fact that it's available in quite a number of languages, which makes it very convenient for microservices architecture. In this type of development, you quite often have a situation where different services are written in different languages. Of course, each of them have their own HTTP client library, but the fact is that they are maintained by completely different teams, which leads to different implementations, requiring you to perform different steps in order to establish a connection, make a request, etc. gRPC abstracts all of that, providing you with the same set of commands you need to execute regardless of the language. Another benefit of this framework is performance. Under the hood, gRPC uses HTTP2 with protocol buffers instead of the traditional JSON used by typical REST APIs. But what is protocol buffer, you may ask? Well, it is another much older creation of Google. Developed in 2001, it is data format used for serialization to binary format. We all love JSON because it is straightforward and human-readable data representation format. But for the same reason, it is also not the most compact one. For computers, it is simply too verbose. Too, um, too many notes. So if you have two services which communicate with each other and don't really require any human interaction, then protobufs can be a reasonable solution considering that readability is not such a big factor here. Ok, so with all of that being said, let's finally take a look at some examples. Let's imagine that we have two different services, one written in Python and another one using Node.js. So let me create a folder called Node Service and then navigate to it. Inside this folder I will initiate a new Node project using npm and then install gRPC. After that, I will create nodeservice.js file. Now, when we have it, I can create gRPC variable. Then we need to create a protoloader. This component will be responsible for reading and parsing proto file, which stores protocol buffer definition. So before we continue, let's actually create one. Let's say that we want to implement a system which will be retrieving Twitter, excuse me, X posts. So let's create a dedicated folder and then add post.protofile. Inside of this file, we have to use a special syntax. It's really simple though. First, we define which version of the syntax we're gonna have here. Let's use the latest version, which is Proto3. Then we define the name of our package. Let's call it post package. Okay, now we need to define the actual structure of our object. To do that, we type message, followed by the name of our choice. Inside of this message, we describe the fields that make up a post. Each field has a type, a name, and unique numeric tag. These numbers are used for efficiency in encoding and decoding process. So, in our case, we have an ID, which is a 32-bit integer, and text field, which is a string. Ok, now let's consider what kind of functionality we would like to implement. Well, probably we want some basic operations like create a new post or get the list of existing posts. These operations should be defined inside a service, which is basically a collection of remote procedure calls. So, first we type RPC followed by the name of our choice, and then we specify input type and output type. In our case, we say that we declare create post method, which takes post as an input, and also returns the value of type post. Now, in addition to that, we also want to declare get all posts method. However, this time, we don't want to have any input parameters, and as the output value, we want to return the list of post records. And this is where protobufs can get weird. First of all, you are not allowed to have no input parameters. There must be something. To resolve this issue, you can either create your own empty message and use it as a parameter, or you can import Google's predefined empty message and use this one instead. Second thing is that you cannot return list of posts. Instead, you need to create a new message, which we can call post list, and then inside of it, we need to use keyword repeated to indicate that we are dealing with an array of records rather than a single post. Ok, now we finally have our protofile ready. So, let's get back to our node application and add a new variable to store the path to this file. Now we need to load package definition. Let's do it by using protoloader.loadSync, which accepts two parameters, path to the protofile 
and optional configuration object where you can fine-tune things like how enums or long integers are handled. In our case, we don't need any custom options, so we just use the first parameter and skip the second one. So, at this point, we have a parsed description of our proto file. However, it's not yet usable. To turn it into something we can actually use in our application, we pass it to gRPC load package definition. This function takes the parse definition and gives us back an object that contains the actual service and message types that were defined under the post package in our proto file. Ok, now we can configure our server. First of all, let's create it by typing new gRPC server. Now, if you remember, we had two functions, create post and get all existing posts. So, at this point, we can finally provide the actual logic implementation for those methods. We can do it by typing server.addService, which accepts the reference to the actual service and object containing the mapping of RPC functions to our implementation. However, in our node service.js file, we don't have those functions created yet, so let's fix it. First of all, let's create the list of existing posts and populate it with some data. Now, let's create a function called create new post. This function should accept two parameters, call and callback. Call is an object which contains things like metadata, actual requests, etc., while callback is a function which is used to send the response back to the client. Ok, so in our case, as the first step, we want to get the post which was sent to us. Then we create a new post with ID equal to existing number of posts plus one and text equal to the text from the request. Then we add it to the list of existing records. And finally, we invoke callback where first parameter is null to indicate that there is no error and second parameter is newly created post. Great, now let's create get all existing posts function and then inside of it, the only thing we need to do is to return the list of posts. However, if you remember, in protofile, we had to create a separate structure to be able to return the list of records. So our response has to match this structure. That's why what we need to return is object with property posts, which is equal to our list of existing posts. Ok, now when we have the entire logic implemented, we can start the server. To do that, we can use bind async method, which accepts three parameters. First is the IP address and port where gRPC server should listen. Let's use localhost in our case. Then we have credentials. In real life application, you would use secure SSL option. But in our case, we can use simpler option by typing create in secure. Finally, we use callback function to show error message in case of any problems or port number in case of success. And that's it. At this point, we have fully operational gRPC server. Now let's create a new folder for our Python service. Let me quickly create and activate virtual environment to avoid conflicts. As the next step, let's install the required packages, gRPC and gRPC tools. Now, before we proceed, it is important to mention that unlike in Node.js, where dynamic loading of proto files is possible, in Python we need to generate the code manually. To do that, we need to use this command. First, we reference protocol buffer compiler and then we provide the following arguments. Pass to the directory with imports. Output destination for generated message classes. Output destination for generated service code. And finally, pass to the actual proto file. When we get all the necessary code generated, we can use it in our Python service code. So, first we import gRPC. Then we import post and post service tab. And finally, we import empty, since as you remember, we need it in get all posts method. Then we can define run function inside which we connect to our server. After that, we create clients tab which we can use to make remote procedure calls. So let's try to create a new post and then print out the response. Let's also try to fetch all existing posts. So here we need to iterate over the list of records we retrieved and print out their ID and text. At the end of this code, we just invoke our run function. So let's test it, shall we? Let me start our node server and then we can invoke Python client code. Okay, so looks like everything works as expected. New post was created and the list was returned. Now, I also would like to point out that what we have just witnessed is called unary call, where we have a simple single request response cycle. However, gRPC supports streaming as well, from server to client, from client to server, and bidirectional streaming. Let's take a look. I will open our proto file and will add a new method called stream post. It also has empty structure as an input. However, when it comes to output, we need to use special keyword stream followed by the type of data you want to stream. Ok, so let's save the changes and open our node service. Here I will add new function called stream all posts. Inside this function I want to iterate over the list of posts and simply write each element to the call object. After that, I need to end the stream with corresponding method. As the final touch, I will add this function to the mapping and save the changes. Now let's open our Python client code and add a new function called request post stream. 
Inside this function, we will iterate over each post we receive from stream posts remote procedure call and print out its content. Now we simply invoke it inside our main function and that's it. However, before we run our client code, we need to regenerate Python protobuffers since we updated our blueprint file by adding new RPC method. Ok, so now when it's done, we can restart our server and run the client code once again. As we can see, works as expected. Well, that's all folks. I hope this video was useful and now you understand the basics of gRPC. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, a comment and of course subscribe for more. Bye.